mission to, um, you know, seek out and find until they've displaced all of their living room furniture uh, with games, which uh, those of you that collect games all know what I'm talking about. Steve Ritchie's high score. Um, I have no idea. I would bet that it's higher than mine, which was a million. Um, we, uh, it's, you know, we should have, we, we should have looped Steve in to talk here. Steve, uh, this is the perfect venue for Steve. Steve doesn't hear really well, um, and he loves to talk, and this isn't a, 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 a jab at him. Steve is a dear friend, and, uh, and it's kind of, um, it's difficult for me to, to try to carry on a monologue. I love talking with Eugene earlier. I was hoping to get on with Mark. Um, I'm going to be hanging up in 10 minutes and I'll be back at like maybe uh, four hours from now, something like that. And I'm hoping I can get Mark or Eugene onto the line with me because carrying on a back and forth. It's a lot more interesting for me and I bet it's a lot more interesting for you. Um, and we're, we've looped back to, I started the story of um, how did I get into game design and programming? Uh, my programming career started um, programming a mainframe using punched cards, which is, you know, if, if, if you want to think 1982 is the Stone Age when we had crappy tools into these video games, um, we are talking before the dinosaurs roamed the earth. Um, I was in seventh grade, which made me 12, which would put it about 1969. And uh, um, there were, uh, there were uh, Saturday classes for high school kids at IIT, which is a college uh, on the near south side of Chicago. Um, they were teaching, um, they had a Univac 1108, you can Google it. It was a computer that, you know, fills up a giant room and has a cooling system and, uh, and uh, you know, it's probably uh, one, one thousandth of one percent the horsepower of your iPhone. Um, and we wrote programs on punch cards, which is how you, which was the most common way to input a, a program into a, a large computer in those days. Um, ended up. Uh, taking some computer classes at high school. Love, love computer programming. Love the feeling of accomplishment. Where you, 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 you set up a problem, you worked on it, and, and you created something that solved the problem, and you got to watch it go, and it kind of took on its own life after you created it. And I, I was totally hooked. Um, in this whole era, there are no video games. Video games hadn't been invented yet. Um, I'm 58 years old, and uh, and this is back in the 60s. Pong came around early 70s. I was in high school at the time. Um, love playing Pong on the television. Um, love playing the mechanical arcade games like the Midway Gun Games. Uh, shuffle bowlers, and was totally addicted to pinball. Um, I grew up a block away from Alvin Gottlieb, who was a family friend of my parents. And so I got to play pinball machines in his basement. Um, pinball was illegal in the greater Chicago area. Um, so they were hard to come by. And when we were on vacation, if we were out of, out of town in a place that had pinball machines, I would... I would uh, be playing pinball, and there's a great story because in, I was in 10th grade, about 1972, 73, it was spring of 73, and was on a school trip to Paris, France with, with the, the French class at my high school. And in France, there were pinballs in every storefront location. They, uh, you saw them everywhere. And, uh, I played as much pinball as I could squeeze in while we were in France and, and to the point where the, the guy directing the trip was sort of rolling his eyes and here you are, you know, taking you to the other side of the world to, to learn about some culture and experience some, 
some other things in the world and see some of the sights. And I was for way too many hours uh, tucked away playing pinball machines. So it was a real passion of mine. Um, got to college, they had a great pinball room and I studied a lot, got a computer science degree and uh, spent lots and lots of my spare time playing pinball machines. In 78, uh, my senior year, a video game called Space Invaders. It wasn't even in the pinball room because the, the game room where I was was on the second floor with about 20 pinball machines. In the basement, there was a bowling alley and there was a Space Invaders in the bowling alley and I went there and played that game every day. And uh, it was amazing and it had me. Um, we had pinballs in the dorm that I lived in and while I was a junior was when the first solid state pinballs came out. So these electromechanical pinballs now, they started to embed microprocessors. Um, Knight Rider was one of the first games and Freedom. Um, in my senior year, we got an eight ball in the dorm. We used to play the hell out of it. We used to, and you won free games, so uh, we, we got pretty good and, and didn't have to pay a lot to play. Um, we would uh, gain access to the game and reprogram them from time to time. And I was ranting on about how, how ridiculous some features on 8-Ball were. Um, late night, probably uh, had a couple Diet Cokes too many that night. And some, one of my friends said, could you do better? And I, and I said, yeah. And I, the next day I wrote letters to Williams, Bally, Gottlieb, um, saying, hey, I'm a senior, I have a computer degree, you're, you're putting computers in these things and you're making the computers do the same types of things that the relays and motors that were in them that they replaced. And there is so much more you can do for gameplay and, and to make the game more interesting and more exciting. And uh, Alvin Gottlieb, who I addressed the letter to, who I know personally never got the letter, it was it was um, it was uh, screened and thrown out, and Bally never responded. But um, a guy named Chris Otis at Williams, who I had met and who had given me a tour, he he uh, wasn't working at the company anymore. But somehow he got the letter, passed it on, and uh, Dave Poole and Ken Fidesna brought me in uh, to come work there. Um, I turned down their job offer, which wasn't as good as the one at Bell Labs and learn really quickly the notion of when you get your, when you when you grow up and you get a job and you're doing something every day figure out how to make that something you're really passionate about and four months after starting at bell labs i still had the itch to make games and they were just starting the defender project just putting the team together um and so that not only gave a place to come work on video games if I wanted to, but it created a vacuum for we need to hire people and they said, you know, come on and work for us. And, uh, and I have loved making games for the last 35 years uh, since that day. So that's, uh, have I ever thought about teaching? From hearing me today, do I sound like I'm a good teacher? That's just a question. I. Uh, I'm a little self-conscious. This is, uh, I'm enjoying this. Um, the questions that are coming in are very good. I just got a text, let me see who wants what. Okay, the person I'm meeting soon is there. So um, it's seven o'clock, it's my bedtime. Um, I plan to be back, I'm thinking about 11, it's seven o'clock in Chicago. Um, I'm thinking about coming back when I get done with what I'm doing tonight, and I'm, I'm thinking it'll probably be about 11, but I, I don't really know the time. Um, I will browse the question and scan them really quickly. California Extreme, um, I think that's what CAX is. Um, they invite me every year. Bowen Karens is very involved in that. Um, the schedule has always been bad in the summer for me and um, I haven't made it yet. I will make it one day. And, uh, and thank you for the comments, I'd be a good teacher. 
Um, thanks for the great questions. Um, again, I hope to get back. I will get back. I don't know what time. I hope I can get Mark or Eugene on here with me because I think it'll be a lot more fun for all of us if we can have some back and forth. Um, Ken, Greg, Dane, David, you guys are unbelievable. Um, I am. It warms my heart that everybody's still here. I, um, in watching a couple of the early marathons, um, it just my heart sank when I would come back from what I'm like doing now. I'd come back, the twitch thing's gone, and what happened? Um, four guys started eight. It's eight hours. You're at the eight hour mark. Uh, as a matter of fact, Ken's timer is going to be at eight hours fifty seconds from now. Um, so you're at, and that shows you what, what the delay is too. Um, from by the time you see this, I think. Because I'm not supposed to comment when I watch this screen. I'm supposed to watch the other one. Um, thanks, everybody. Um, and guys, keep up the great work. I'll be back, and I can't wait to see you guys uh, tonight and tomorrow morning. Um, take care, everybody. I've enjoyed this.